What does this serve on it that you were dusting? What do we serve on this piece if we've got two handles in the plate? I don't know. It's just always on cookies! 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 Get it off the shelf and let's have some cookies! <laughs> the cookie plate. You put a doily on top to protect this particular decoration. It's called the cabinet plate. You serve the cookie, you throw away the doily, and you dust it, and then you put it back. And it looks nice up on the cabinet. Made in Czechoslovakia, dates to the 1920s, value on the piece about $70. Nice. Thank you. My pleasure. So you've got this piece which is not from Houston, it's from Japan, because it says I'm from Japan on the back. <laughs> Right. Some people make it easy for me. Right. They make me look good. And remember, all of the objects that come in, I didn't know she was bringing a Japanese porcelain plate. None of the objects that come in here, I have seen before. So all those other appraisers that you've seen, everything's vetted. They know what's coming. They've seen a picture. They understand what's happening. All those shows. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not like, oh, walk in, no idea. Happens from here, you know? So I'm able to go, oh yeah, I know what that is, and I know how to identify it, and I know how to tell you what the value is, and so on and so forth. Remember, during this program, you may not audio or videotape any portion of it, but you can watch, of course, this and other segments of um, this particular program on my YouTube channel. So you can see the videos, and we edit them so you can understand and learn more about what to look for. How many of these pieces do you have? Just this one? Uh, no, it's a serving of eight, and then also the platter. So there's a platter, uh, serving, cast, covered casserole with the top, covered. with the lid, keep the mashed potatoes nice and warm. Okay. okay. Creamer and sugar? Is there a match? Oh, gravy boat. Is there an underplate on the gra underneath the gravy boat? This means something if there's an underplate yes. on the gravy boat. Yes. Attached? Is it? Oh, you're both looking at each other like you're not sure. <laughs> I don't really remember. It's been in the garage. It's been in the attic. It's been in the attic. Not the basement because it's used and you don't have basements. Right? Right. Let me remind everybody. Houston has no basements. <laughs> okay, so it's in the attic, which means it's going to get 100, 140 degrees up there if it's hot. Right? Is that the best place to store your stuff? No, not too good, not too good. Because it's like menopause hot up there, <laughs> right? It's really hot. Anyway, so you want to think about, again, um, getting that into an area of your home that, of course, doesn't have so much temperature and humidity changes. That's true of any object, okay? okay? I like you to store things in plastic tubs. Why plastic tubs? Tub the plastic tubs will actually repel bugs. Bugs don't like to be in plastic. They like cardboard boxes. They like wooden crates. They like that kind of stuff. So you want to use those plastic tubs. And you want to make sure that you do not stack plates any more than six high. Six even, high. Even with bubble wrap? Even with bubble wrap. And you should never store in bubble wrap. Oh. Why shouldn't you store in bubble wrap? It retains heat. Bubble wrap is for the moving people. When you transfer a plate from point A to point B, that's bubble wrap. Once it gets to the place where it's going to live, the bubble wrap has to go. Too much heat in bubble wrap. Okay, it got shipped. In the, got shipped. Since it's been shipped, it's been in, in bubble wrap because they shipped it in but bubble wrap, in, and that was correct. But it's in plastic. It's in plastic. Guess what? Plastic will retain heat. Think of putting a plastic bag over your head. <laughs> it's gonna get hot, right? So, no plastic. Okay. Okay. So anyway, and no more than how many high? Six. Six high. Okay. Because the weight of those plates, right? Once you get to seven, twelve high, will basically damage the the underplate or the the plate at the bottom. Okay. Does it have a matching salt and pepper shaker? No. This is important. No. no. That helps to date the piece. Why? They introduced matching salt and pepper shakers around 1950. Ah, oh, I didn't know that. So you could have a matching teacup, matching teapot, matching creamer, but if you've got a salt and pepper shaker, it's probably later. Your piece is dated to about 1925 to about 1945. Is that possible in your family history? Yes. Okay. And then, and I don't know your family, and I've never met you, I've never seen this plate before. <laughs> But looking at this plate, looking at the mark, and looking at how it's made, it is actually transferware. This is not hand painted. A piece of paper is taken, and it's transferred onto this plate, and then basically it is glazed over that piece of paper and refired in the kiln. This plate has to go through the kiln or the oven that basically creates the plate, makes the clay into hard porcelain at a high temperature, 
has to go through the, the oven or the kiln at least three times. Right? Before it's glazed, after it's the transfer decoration is put on it, and after the decoration and the glaze is put on it. So three times. That means it has to be very durable. How do you tell if it's durable? Nice, bright, white clay. The brighter and whiter the clay, if you're at that flea market, that thrift store, that antique show, look for the brightest, whitest clay you can. And also look for 22 karat gold banding or sterling silver around it, right? If it doesn't have it, it's not of as high quality, right? Yours does have 22 karat gold banding, but you might have sterling silver or even platinum on the edges of your plates. How can I tell it's 22 karat? 22 karat basically shimmers a little bit more than others, and usually 22 karat is also marked on the back. Yours is not. Yours is 22 karat, however. Sometimes they mark it, 22 karat. The Americans tend to do that more than the Japanese. Are you learning things? Are you having fun? Are you surprised by this? I know there's all this stuff coming out quick. All right, and my Connecticut accent is not bothering you too much. Okay, good. Because when I start to look for coffee, then I have some problems. <laughs> value on this one plate is about $12. The whole set that you're describing, with the covered casserole, with the platter, with the gravy boat, with the sugar and creamer, um, a service for eight, you're probably looking at $250 to $350 in all of it. Assuming that nothing's chipped, nothing's broken, nothing's cracked, everything's in good shape. 